those injuries. Um, so it's really nice to see her get the start again tonight. She is that senior leadership in the circle. And it's good to see her back out there. Game on between the Cougars and the Cowgirls. Temple winds and misses just outside for ball one. She came in and closed um, that game last night against Oklahoma State and did a really good job. I think struck out three batters in just an inning and a little bit of work. Really good performance from her last night. 1-0 misses low. So two balls and no strikes to Rosie Davis, the freshman. Davis digs in, Temples, Wines delivers, nice breaking ball, that finds the strike zone, two and one. A good leadoff hitter trying to show her teammates all the things that the pitcher has up in store as Temples misses outside, three balls and one strike to Davis. You know, and BYU really got themselves in trouble last night, starting the game with a leadoff walk immediately to follow with the home run by Goodwin, hoping to see a little bit of a different start from the Cougars today. It's never fun to work from behind, especially that first inning. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Misses low with another breaking ball. So back-to-back -back games with back-to-back -back opening walks for the Cougars. And we'll see how Chloe Temples responds from the circle. And that'll bring up third baseman Talon Edwards for the Cowgirls. There's the Oklahoma State coach, Kenny Gajewski. Ninth season with the Cowgirls. Look at that overall record. Bunt, laced down, and Udall comes in to make a very difficult play look very easy to get that out. Yeah, it's awesome she, she made that play. It almost looked like she was tripping a little bit as she was going to make that throw, but these girls are super athletic, and even with her feet off a little bit, was able to pull off a good throw over to first base and get that out. And on the other side, Talon Edwards does the job, gets the runner over. And now Carly Godwin the freshman with the big bat. Woo! That one had some heat behind it there from Chloe Temples. We heard that pop up here in their first strike. And you talked about BYU not wanting to come from behind, but as a pitcher going up against another big batter, you want to be the aggressor and come at them. Absolutely. It's way more strategic for these pitchers to go in throwing strikes because the more balls they throw, especially at the beginning of the count, those hitters get to be more choosy at what they're swinging at. And it really is a disadvantage for the pitchers at that point. Temples misses with their second offering. So here's the 1-1. Another off-speed falls in the strike zone. One ball and two strikes to Carly Godwin. Love to see that change up Temples has when it's on. It is such a good pitch. It really like makes the difference in her game if that pitch is working for her and then her rise ball to offset it. It makes her really dangerous. The high pop fly into shallow right field. Coming up to make the catch is Lily Owens. And just like that, BYU has two outs in the top of the first. Keeping Carly Godwin inside the park is always a bonus. Absolutely. And kind of interesting to see the changes that are made between last night's game and today. Lily Owens was playing third yesterday and is now out in right field. Just kind of shows you these girls are really capable of playing a lot of different positions. And whenever the you know coaches need them to make that adjustment, they really can, a lot of them. Caroline Wong. This is this one to short, scooped up and fired across. Agbayani to Ava. And BYU escapes. And we head to the bottom of the first. And there's the defense on the other side for the Cowgirls. And Kyra Aycock misses on the outside. Two balls and no strikes to Agbayani. Sophomore 
from Georgia. 4-1 with the 2.87 ERA this year. And that one misses high. Three balls and no strikes. And I mentioned this in the open, but uh, Agbayani's father, Benny Agbayani, who was on my fantasy baseball team when I was growing up in high school. How he cool. also He also wore number 50 for the Mets. So repping her dad. And there's a strike from Kyra Aycock on the outside. Very cool opportunity for her to play alongside her sister here at BYU. And we'll dive into that, I'm sure. Here's the 3-1 offering from Kyra Aycock. The check swing from Agbayani, but Aycock hits that outside corner, and the count is full. Aycock winds, delivers, and just barely misses on the outside corner. I see some raised eyebrows from you, Tate, <laughs> on that one. I mean, good eye by her. That was a really close pitch. But I mean, a walk is a walk, and BYU will take it. There's Coach Gordon Eakin, 22nd season with the Cougars. And the 681 winning average, his overall record. Legendary coach in the sophomore world, especially here on the west side of the United States. So Bejarano squares and shows bunt, pulls it back. And Kyra Aycock misses high for ball one. And Bejarano, honestly, a fantastic sacrifice bunter. That's why she's so good in that two spot. BYU just trying to move a run over to second base and have someone in scoring position. We, we talked about in the open, just it's been so hard for them to manufacture runs the last couple games. So anytime they can get someone into scoring position, they're going to do it. Acock misses low and outside for two balls and no strikes. Why do you feel like it has been so difficult to get these bats rejuvenated? I mean, coming into Big 12 play, these pitchers are really good. Um, and I mean, BYU had a couple challenging games in their preseason, but I feel like the pitching level has increased mm. <laughs> since the beginning of the season, which it just takes a second, a little bit of adjusting. But like we've talked about, just so much better of an opportunity for BYU being in this Big 12 conference to prepare them for the postseason tournament. Back-to-back -to -back walks for Kyra Aycock. And BYU gladly will take that. Nobody out, bottom of the first. Runners at first and second for the Cougars with Lily Owens. Early game jitters. Get right back in that circle. And Lily Owens up at the plate for BYU. Owens squares and pulls it back. And Acock misses high. One ball, no strike. Chino Hills, California. The sophomore batting 389 so far this year, 17 RBIs. Look at that on base percentage. Yeah, she has really come out and played well for the Cougars this year. Been super impressed with her batting. Here's the 1 0. And knee high fastball fired in there for a strike from Acock. Look at those eyes, determination from Kyra Acock. And try and bounce back after giving up two free passes to the Cougars. Here's the 1-1. One, one. A check swing foul. So one ball and two strikes now to Lily Owens. And this is where if you're in that hitting mentality, Taylor, it's almost uh, choke up a little bit, shorten that swing, almost defensive style, just get the ball and play. Absolutely. And something preferably to the right side to move these two runners. There you go, as you called it. Slapped into right field. Runners will hold a great throw from Claire Tim to keep the BYU Cougars at bay. But there's BYU's first hit. So two walks and a hit for Kyra Aycock. It's not the start that these Cowgirls wanted. Yeah, but definitely the start that BYU needed. She didn't even swing all the way through no. that ball, but hit it exactly where she needed to. And like you said, Tim's throw on the money. She had another one yesterday that was just perfectly thrown. She has a good arm out there in right field. So the right side of the infield plays up. There's a ball driven. Deep and gone! A grand slam for BYU! The bat 
Knights have finally woken up. Hunter Abba delivers. How fun. Hunter Abba, we know she can do it. And what a fun opportunity, Grand Slam. That's like the best feeling. So cool for Hunter Abba. Oh, she was dialed in. And she got a hold of it. And that thing just took off. David what, a, what a different start for BYU than they've had in their last five or so games to come out and be on top for nothing in the first inning, like, just hasn't been what we've been seeing. And there's a dribbler, the second. And Davis fires over to Godwin in the first out for the Cowgirls here in the bottom of the first. But like you said, it, it completely changes the, the vibes in that dugout for BYU. It's almost like that monkey, proverbial monkey, has been lifted off their shoulders. Yeah, and especially for pitchers and and defense, like you have a little room for air rather than just on your toes praying <laughs> nothing bad happens. You, you get to play with a lead. It's just so much better to play with a lead and super exciting for the Cougars. Kamoku, 306 batting average. Eight RBI so far for the junior on the season. And she's down 0-1. Here's the delivery. Acock misses high, one ball, one strike. And there's another ball driven into left. Go right at Taylor Anderson. And two away for the Cowgirls here in the bottom of the first. I mean, it's only the first inning, but I mean, BYU may be able to chase Acock out of the circle, right? We may see a couple different arms today. They've already got two warming up in the bullpen. Yeah. And Oklahoma State has a fantastic pitching staff. Um, just going to be a tough one for BYU. have to get through all of their pitchers. But as long as they play really clean defense, I mean, a 4-0 lead, that's a lot to work with. There's a pitch missing inside. So Tristan Turlington now, the sophomore, with a one and one count. And another slow dribbler. Bloodworth scoops it up and fires across to Godwin. So BYU wakes up their bats, gets by you. We'll try and play defense. Chloe Temples in the circle. And we've talked about before daily how it completely changes your mindset as a pitcher to be 0-0 zero, zero, and then now to be pitching up for nothing. Yeah, totally gives you all the confidence in the world, especially after how she's thrown to this team so far, like strikeouts last night, you know, a really good start to the first inning. Hoping to see some really good things from Chloe today, and we hope that she's feeling good as well. It's awesome that she's getting the start. Temples misses outside. One ball, one strike to Claire Tim. We saw square and showed bunt in that first pitch she saw to lead off the inning. And here's the 1-1 pitch. Missing high. Two balls and a strike. Chloe Temple's going through her, her pre-pitch routine. Here's the 2-1. And change up misses low in the dirt. Three balls and a strike. And the Cowgirls cheering on their teammate, Claire Tim. This is not a, a position that is too unfamiliar with them. being down, but here's the 3-1 pitch, and a leadoff walk for Claire Tim to start the second. You know, and Temple's got out of that the first inning, starting off with a leadoff walk, but any time that happens in an inning, the likelihood of Oklahoma State scoring or any team scoring just increases so much. 
you really don't want to start off innings like that. And hopefully she can get away with it again this inning and have another scoreless, um, scoreless inning. Michaela Wark. And Michaela Wark lifts this one in the gap. Right at the base of the fence. Bejarano quickly gets it in, but a double for Wark. And quickly, right after you said that, Sandy, Oklahoma State in scoring position. And that ball was smoked. Yeah, she got all of that one. I mean, just a couple feet higher, and that's easily over the fence. She just hit too much of a line drive. Yeah, from our vantage point from the naked eye, I thought it hit the base, but it hit the middle of the fence. A lot of top spin on that thing. But now we'll see how Chloe Temples responds. And already we're seeing David square to show bunt. She pulls it back. First pitch she sees, she fouls this one out of play. And they're going to say that's a catch. Going all the way up to make that catch up against the net was Maddie Udall. What a big catch. I honestly thought that was just going to hit the net, you Same. know, and not even be playable. But she caught it right before it hit the net. Take another look. Udall on her horse coming over. Ooh, D. She got it. Outs like that, BYU needs at this point with runners in scoring position. That was huge for Temples and for BYU's defense. And Temples comes right back in there with the strike. No balls and one strike. And Megan Bloodworth, most terrifying name in all of college softball. Base hit, scores at least one. Swings and fouls this one off, 0-2. Now these, these positions were always the most nerve-wracking when you, you have those runners right there in scoring position, and as a batter, you try to fight with yourself not to be too over-anxious and not to, not to hit yourself or swing yourself out of an at-bat. Exactly. You know it's your job to score those runs, and you're trying so hard to execute it. Sometimes that balance of trying too hard and just letting your athleticism take over. It, it can be really difficult. And Bloodworth stays alive and fouls that one out of play. But Temple's really in the better position right now. I mean, a 2-0 count, she, she has a lot more room to work. She can throw things, you know, on corners of the plate, whereas Bloodworth is a little bit in the protective situation. Here's the 0-2 pitch, Bloodworth. Grounds this one to second. Turlington fires over to Ava. It'll be recorded as a sacrifice in the books. But Oklahoma State gets a run across. Four to one. BYU still with the lead. And two down here in the bottom, uh, excuse me, the top of the second. I mean, Oklahoma State would obviously prefer a hit in this situation, but I mean, with the situation that Bloodworth was in, I mean, a slow ground ball to second scores a run, and she does the job, and that's really important in games like this. And a bunt is shown from Taylor Anderson, the left fielder. Dripping Springs, Texas, the freshman. Takes a big, deep breath and digs in left-hand side of that batter's box. And I think we have this, this is her first career start. So that's exciting for her. First career start for Anderson. And she sees that pitch come across the plate. One ball, one strike, two outs. Top of the second. And we talked about those leadoff walks potentially coming to hurt. I mean, so far in this inning, no runs would have scored if Chloe's hadn't started off with that leadoff walk. Those always come back to bite you. I mean, 90% of the time. Breaking ball misses there from Temples. There's a look at Wark at third. And Taylor Anderson again takes a big deep breath. Two balls and one strike. Here's the wind up and the delivery from Temples. Right down the middle for strike two. In that situation, you almost think that 
maybe Anderson was looking breaking ball, and she was a little bit frozen up when she saw that fastball coming yeah. through. Yep, I agree. And that's what makes it so good for Temples to have those different types of pitches because then when hitters are expecting, she can surprise them. And Temples calls time. Another great shot from our tremendous camera crew. Two balls and two strikes. She fights one off, down to Ava, who scoops it up and tags Anderson. So BYU is fourth from left to right from the outfield. And the first pitch in the inning is high to Macy Simmons. And Kyra Aycock trying to rebound after tumultuous first inning, giving up those four runs. There's a hard ground ball to short. Bloodworth from the corner overthrows Godwin at first. And BYU is aboard. And Bloodworth doing good to keep it in play on the defensive side, but she got herself in a really deep hole. Yeah, I mean, that ball took her back, and so she really had no choice but just to throw off her back foot. And, I mean, sometimes those throws just get away from you. And Macy Simmons safely at first. So it looks like Coach Eakin. So 51 for three is what Brady Sanderson said. So Lexi Bennett will come on to run instead of Macy Simmons. So that'll bring up Jalen Lambert for BYU. And Kyra Aycock quickly misses. Lambert, the junior out of Temecula, California. Here's the 1-0. And a missed bunt goes foul. One ball and one strike. Yeah, even though that BYU has that 4-1 lead right now, they're still just looking for runs. I don't, I don't think anything feels safe to them right now. So moving that runner into scoring position, I'm not surprised that's the... Um, the play. What word am I looking for? <laughs> strategy. The strategy, thank you, that BYU has right now. The old adage, get her on, get her over, get her in. Here's the 1-1. One -one. And Acock misses outside. Two balls and a strike. Now how confident would Coach Eakin be to let Jalen Lambert show bunt and pull it back. And she's gonna slap this one to the right, excuse me, to the left side. Bloodworth does well to get the lead runner. 6-3 put out, Bloodworth to Davis. And that'll bring up the starting leadoff batter for BYU, Ilan Agbayani. Honestly, a pretty well hit ball by Lambert. Um, we didn't mention, but Oklahoma State was completely shifted. Right field was actually come in and playing infield, which just set them up perfectly for that play against Lambert. Throw down to second, and BYU is out. So throwing it down. And Jayla Lambert is out at second base. Looks like they're going to do a review. So Coach Eakin went over to Brett Higgins at third and wanted them to take another look at it. So now Brady Sanderson, the home plate umpire, Carlos Guzman, the first base umpire, and Brett Higgins, the third base umpire, coming together to consult. Here's a look, another angle. That's so close. Hard to see from that angle. There's another angle. I mean, it looks like an absolute dime. Yeah, Caroline I mean, Wong. perfect throw. All right, so the umpires have walked away from the monitor.
And the call is confirmed. So BYU, two outs here in the bottom of the second. And I mean, even though the review didn't go Coach Eakin or BYU's way, I mean, I would have asked for the review as well. I'm For sure. If you can have a runner on second base and one less out. There's an absolute laser right up the middle between the wickets of Acock. And BYU still alive in the bottom of the inning. Go ahead. Oh, you're good. Agbayani still continues to be on fire today. I mean, that was a laser. And and that's where it's the, oh, should we have stolen her? Should we have not? Because she would have safely got to second on that ball anyways. And that's just where softball becomes a gamble. And, you know, you never really know what's going to happen the next at bat. Acock rebounds and fires with a strike. And Maddie Bejarano who walked in her first at bat. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Paints that outside corner. Oh, I'm surprised that one was called a strike. But as long as the umpire's consistent with it and is going to call it all game, I mean, that's all you can ask for. Here's the 0-2. And you see Caroline Wong sitting up way outside, hoping to get Bejarano to chase. But going back to that last pitch that was called the strike, if I'm Chloe Temples, I'm thinking to myself, okay. Absolutely. Especially since she has such a good rise ball, she better use that upper part of the zone. Here's the one, two. This one slapped down the line, fair ball into left field, going all the way to the wall. Taylor Anderson gets the ball in play. And an RBI double for Matty Bejarano, extending BYU's lead five to one in the bottom of the second. Mejorano excited about that hit, as she should be. Perfectly placed down that third baseline. And she hit it hard enough, it rolled all the way to the fence, allowing Ogbayani to score from first base, really showing her speed off, though, too. Hard to score from first to home. And then you're just BYU wishing you didn't call a steal on that play before. Because you have two more runs if she doesn't get thrown out at second. And Acock making the glove pop but missing low, so one ball, no strikes, to Lily Owens, who singled her first time up. Here's the 1-0. Big swing and a miss. Good pitch there from Acock. Yeah, I think that's one of the first off-speed pitches that we've seen from her so far. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Low and in the dirt. There's the throw down to second. And Bejarano trying to get that, extend that secondary lead. But after seeing what Wong can do, I don't know if I'd test her too much. Yeah. Haven't seen her make a bad throw yet. That offering misses inside. So three balls and one strike. Lily Owens back in the batter's box. Here's the 3-1 pitch from Acock. Slow ground ball to third. Edwards has it, fires over to first, and barely, barely gets him out. So BYU attacks on another. They extend their lead 5-1. to one. These bats to wake up, and I think the alarm clock is not, not on anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so important for them to come out and they're keeping the momentum rolling. I mean, two innings with a number up on the board. I mean, such a change. We've seen so many zeros at the end of innings from them lately. And I think that's going to make a huge difference in this game and even tomorrow's game if they can keep carrying that with them. Mm. Temple's first pitch, low and in the dirt. One ball and no strikes. Time is called. And Rosie Davis takes a big, deep breath. She walked her first at bat. Here's the 1-0. This one is high, lifted deep into center field, and this one is gone. Rosie Davis, an absolute bomb to center field. A solo shot, making it 5-2. 
And maybe that was the spark that will ignite the cowgirl offense. Yeah, especially those leadoff hits. They really just, the bat just gets passed and passed and passed when that happens. And she got all of that ball. That went well past our camera crew and stationed out there past the trees onto the practice track and field course. And if you're Temples, you've thrown really good up until this point. I mean, you're going to make a mistake sometimes, right? I, I just, she needs to not let it get to her and still just keep doing what she's doing. Even though that's not what she wanted to have happen, it's sports and it happens. So we'll see how she recovers from that. And then it just makes Bejarano's double even more important to add on that insurance run for BYU. Here's Chloe Temple's offering. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball in there for strike one. Talon Edwards had to sacrifice bunt to move the runner over. In her first at bat. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Missing high and outside, two balls and a strike. Here's the 2-1 pitch, and this one is lifted into right field, going all the way over to the line and making the catch is Lily Owens. And for somebody who played third base last night, that is not an easy play to make. <laughs> I was just going to say, she's had two absolute rockets into the sky that she's had to catch, just really high balls. And the higher the ball, the harder it is to track. She ran all the way to the line and secured that catch. Really good play by her. BYU needed that. So one away here in the top of the third. Here's the 0-0 pitch. Misses high and outside to Carly Godwin. And she flew out, ironically enough, to Lily Owens in her first at bat. And we know the power that she has. Here's the 1-0. And here's another ball lifted high in the air. And going out to make the catch, Tristan Turlington, two away. I think something that's also underrated here too, Taylor, is we have some cloud action going on here and up in the sky. And in the grayer skies, the more difficult it is to track these balls that are up in the air. Yeah, absolutely. BYU players doing a really good job keeping track of those. But they're probably a little used to that when Temples is pitching just because she has that rise ball spin. Uh -huh. I mean... You see a lot of those high balls, less grounders from her while she's pitching just because of the way that she throws and the spin that she puts on it. Good point. Yeah, there's a look. And it, uh, it's a hazy sky out there. And I guess one difference between baseball and softball, it does help when that is a bright neon yellow ball out there, but still difficult to see. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Low and in the dirt. One ball, one strike. The Caroline Wong had an absolute laser from her knees to throw out BYU's steal attempt at second. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Right down the middle. One ball and two strikes. Here's the one, two. Grounder to short. Firing all the way across. Oh, Hunter Alba couldn't make the scoop. Ilana Agbayani was backed up and threw that one off of her back foot. Had to rush it. Yeah, really similar play to what we saw Bloodworth make. And both of them you saw not their best throws. It really is tough to get a throw off in that situation. And softball is such a quick game. They know if they take any steps back, their throw has to be delivered immediately. And I mean so close to getting a really good play out of that ball. You can hear Chloe Temples' grunt all the way up here on that off-speed pitch. One ball and no strikes to Claire Tim. Tim. 
And I don't know if that grunts. grunts. So after the visit, here's the 1-0 offering from Chloe Temples. And this one laced into right field, a one-hopper to Owens, who quickly gets the ball in play. And now Oklahoma State's got runners at the corners. With two down here in the top of the third. But Lily Owens showing off her athletic ability to track that down and get it in. Yeah, she's had lots of action out there today. And honestly, the little struggle Turlington had picking up that ball, it was so lucky that Ogbayani was there to pick that off because um, that's very easily could have turned into Oklahoma State score from third. Here comes Wark. And Temples misses on the off speed. So Tim at first, Wong at third for Oklahoma State. Wark at the dish. Here's the 1-0 pitch. She paints that outside corner for strike two, or excuse me, strike one. One ball and one strike from Chloe Temples. You know, BYU had two first and third situations yesterday. One offensively where they were able to score and another defensively where they picked off an Oklahoma State runner. These can be very tricky situations. I mean, you see things go wrong all the time in them, especially if Oklahoma State you know, tries to draw a throw to second or get that runner on first over to second. And Temples pulled the string on that off speed and got Wark out in front. A little tip. Got Macy Simmons back there. And she's okay. Here's the one-two pitch. This one lifted. Off the netting. So Wark stays alive. A little no diggity from the dugout. Here's the one two in the dirt. And Macy Simmons does a great job to keep that in front of her, not allowing Wong to come home and score, but Tim will go down to second base. Yeah, great job by Simmons knocking that ball down. And Chloe Temple's really got to dig in deep here. The 2-2 pitch. Misses high. Three balls and two strikes. I mean, in tough situation for BYU, easily could have been out of this inning without the situation they're in where Oklahoma State has two runners in scoring position. Hunter picks up that ball. It was, it was a hard play, but if she picks up that ball, it gets them out of this inning. Here's the payoff pitch. Lifted into shallow center field, but coming on to make the play was Jalen Lambert, and BYU escapes. And the right-hander rocks and fires, misses low for ball one. And the MVP star of the show so far, Hunter Ava at the dish, who had that ginormous grand slam in the first. And Coots looks like hit by pitch, I think. Nicked her in the foot. So Ava will take that and a free pass down to first. Off the toe. Yeah, she took like that like a champ. Oh, off the back. The back foot. So that'll bring up Maddie Udall. That's a nice strike from Katie Coots on the outside corner. And Maddie grounded out in her first at bat. And she's looking for her first hit so far in the series. Here's the 0 1. And this one is laced hard up the middle. And if I'm scoring it, that was hit hard enough. 
that I feel like that, that would have been a hit anyway. Yeah. I mean, it did look like it bounced just under Bloodworth's glove. I, I honestly thought she was going to make a play on it, but that's a really tough ball. Like, it would have been a very good play if she was able to get her glove on that. And if she does, potentially a double play. I mean, that ball was hit so hard. So Kayla Komoku at the dish, squares around to show Bunt, pulls it back. And she's 0 for 1, and flew out in her first at bat. And the sun begins to come out here at Gail Miller Field. Oh, they're going to say that that actually hit Komoku on the hand? Yeah, I actually thought that was a foul ball. I, I just thought she was pulling back and it hit her bat. But it must have hit her right in the arm guard. I mean, she's favoring that elbow right now. Take another look at it. Sorry, right arm, not her left arm where her arm guard is, but yeah. Yeah, so fun to see so many people here. It's nice to have some good weather. Yes, especially in March. Yeah, I mean, yesterday was beautiful, and today is still a really nice day, just a little bit more cloudy. But Haley. nothing better than playing in Provo in some good weather. Haley Morrow up at the dish with an 0-1 count. Base is juiced, full of Cougars. And Morrow watches that offering low and outside for one ball and one strike. And the weather is so nice, they're actually moving the game up tomorrow. So game will start at 11.30 Mountain Time tomorrow. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Ooh, pulling the string was Katie Coots, and I think it looked like that Morrow went around on the check swing. Yeah. So one ball, two strikes, nobody out, base is loaded in the bottom of the third. There's a line drive, no doubter! Another grand slam! BYU pouring it on! Haley Morrow pumped about that hit. Haley Morrow was a really big part of the team last year, and she still is this year, but she struggled to find her bat a little bit. I mean, nothing can feel better than that right now for her, and she crushed that ball. I mean, the home runs we're seeing today are just so out of the park. <laughs> Pretty fun for the Cougars. So awesome for Haley Morrow. And you see the energy carrying it over into the dugout and almost doubling that BYU lead 9-2 to two in the bottom of the third. And Macy Simmons at the dish who sees that strike come from Katie Coots. I mean, BYU has to be feeling good right now. I mean, they're almost threatening at a run roll right now, which is like the best thing that you can do when you go get a win, especially after just struggling so much. You know, they have had a lot of losses so far in the Big 12, not what they wanted to have happen. Um, but like we talked about in the pregame, just really waking up those bats can make a really big difference for them. I think it was your pep talk. <laughs> yeah, they heard me. And this ball lifted off of the net. So no balls and two strikes to Simmons. Still nobody out for Oklahoma State here in the bottom of the third. Yeah, I say one or two more hits, and I wouldn't be surprised to see another pitching change. Here's the 0-2. This one, a laser line drive right at Rosie Davis, who gets the first out of the bottom of the third. And even then, another hard hit ball. You have to be, still, you have to be pleased if you're Coach Eakin. Yeah, never mad about a hard hit ball. It's the ones that you don't hit hard, that you don't feel good about. But even if you get out on a hard hit ball, you still go back to the dugout feeling okay about it. So Lambert swings and fouls off the first pitch that she sees from Coots. 0-1 is the count. Katie Coots winds and fires. And misses high and outside. 
Acock got that pitch last inning, but that one just a little bit too far outside from Coots. Here's the 1-1. This one lifted down the left field line. Oh! Did she catch it? Oh, that, oh what a play! Talon Edwards, do your thing. Yeah, that was a really good catch. And the fact that no one slammed into each other on that, because <laughs> they were all right there. Unbelievable athleticism from Talon Edwards. Like you said, dodging her two teammates, dodging the fence. What a play. And that really comes from good communication. I mean, we couldn't really hear up here. But Edwards had to have been calling the ball for the other two to, you know, back off and give it to her. Really good play. Top of the order, Agbayani. One ball and one strike. Agbayani in her last at bat and that laser single up the middle. She looks at that offering low and in the dirt. Two balls and a strike. Here's the 2 1. And this ball is lifted high and far. Hawaii 5 0 makes it 10 to 2, BYU. City for BYU right now. I mean, going from struggling to get a couple hits yesterday to three bombs already in just a couple innings. Agbayani is having a day and a weekend. Stunting like her daddy. An absolute bomb, like you said, no doubter. Wow. And change the mentality changes the mentality of the game even a little bit more. I mean, now BYU is in that run rule range. If they can hold off Oklahoma State a couple more times, I mean, they go home, you know, with a run rule win like that's huge for them. And Coots misses low for two balls and no strikes to Bejarano. Maddie Bejarano really opened things up with an RBI double down the left side. And Coots fires in there with the strike, two balls and one strike. Here's the 2-1. And Coots misses low. And you're seeing after, after all these home run balls, Coots is all of her misses now are all low. She's trying to keep that ball low, trying yeah. to force BOU to hit a ground ball somewhere. And it's tough, especially after a couple home runs in an inning or a couple innings to come back and throw strikes. You want to, you know, you're not hitting your corners as good as you want to be, so you're trying to do that, which ultimately means more balls. And then we see the walks happen. And there we see Acock in the bullpen looking physically distraught there. Didn't look very comfortable. And Coots fires in there with the strike. Lily Owens at the plate. And Lily Owens has done really well defensively out in right field today. Here's the 0-1. Ooh, great pitch. Lily Owens is a really aggressive hitter. I feel like I don't watch her take strikes very often. Um, I feel like she's had a little bit of timing issues this series, a little bit ahead of the ball. Check, swing, down to third. Talon Edwards throw, pulls, got one off the bag. And Owens is aboard, keeping this BYU rally going. Here's the OO pitch. And Ava, really hard ground ball to third. Edwards fires over. And Acock, with one pitch, gets BYU out, but not before the, their batting order and letting it fly today. 
Now we're going to do it on the defensive side. And Temples fires in there with a strike. And if you're Temples, if you're in the circle, you have to be playing with house money, right? Oh, yeah. Nothing better than throwing with a 10-2 lead. And especially if BYU could pull off that, you know, run rule and save her two innings of throwing, especially since we know she's been hurting, that would be huge for the Cougars. Fantastic bunt from Scotland David. Gets Oklahoma State starting here in the top of the fourth inning. And that smile is almost a smile of relief, I guess. Honestly, a perfect bunt. <laughs> you couldn't draw it up better than that. I mean, BYU really had no chance. Props to her on that. Hunter Ava came up from her first base position as quickly as she could. But the speed of Scotland David got her there at first. So now Bloodworth. And Bloodworth sends this one high and far and gone. Oklahoma State not going quietly into the night. Tacking on two more, Megan Bloodworth. Waking things up here for those cowgirls. This is almost like a home run derby. <laughs> I think we've had five home runs already this game. Two from Oklahoma State, three from BYU, and all completely smashed. Bloodworth more like Slugworth here today. 10-4, to four, BYU still on top, but Coaches are going to come out and have a talk with Chloe Temples. And even with the home run, I mean, BYU is still sitting really good. They need to get out and, you know, minimize the amount of runs that Oklahoma State does score. But they still are pitching with a lead, and we need to keep seeing lots of strikes from Chloe Temples you know, talking about a recovery after home runs, just really still going after it and trusting what she's got. Taylor Anderson steps into the box, pulls it back, and Temples misses low for one ball and no strikes. Still nobody out. 10-4. to four. BYU with the lead. Anderson again squares around. And she keeps it this time. And Temple just misses low and inside. Two balls and no strikes. And like you mentioned before, Taylor, it is, it is softball. And so if you throw strikes and you're playing against a good team like Oklahoma State, they're going to do their job every now and again too. Oh, yeah, especially with, you know, lots of players on their team like three, four, seven, five home runs already on the season. I mean, it's just part of the game and it happens. Temples gets that one to fall in. Two balls and a strike. Taylor Anderson 0 for 1 with a ground out. Again, getting her first collegiate start. Here's the 2 1 pitch. And this one roped into right field. And this one's gone. First career start. First career home run for Taylor Anderson. And look at the love from her teammates. Can't get more exciting than that. Your very first collegiate game and to smash one out of the park. Super fun feeling. Exciting for Taylor Anderson. 10 to five. Gets in the circle, gets her sign. And Rosie Davis at the dish, shows bunt, and lays one down foul. And it's a strike in the book, so Kate Daly gets ahead of the count. A little bit of a sneaky bunt. I mean, you really don't see right-handed hitters just go for a bunt for a hit. Um, you know, normally we just see sacrifice bunts when there's a runner on first base or, they're, you know, they're trying to move runners. But she is speedy, and so... If she gets that down, it could be really effective. A check swing from Davis. And first base umpire Carlos Guzman says she went around. 
And Davis disagrees. But either way, she's got to go back in the batter's box down 0-2. And again, kind of smart of her to have that, you know, sneaky bunt approach at the beginning because she had a home run last time. That's the last thing they're expecting from her is a bunt after she, you know, home run her last at bat. Macy Simmons was set up outside. Kate Daly hit the spot, but it was too far out of play for a ball. So one ball, two strikes. Here's the one, two. Oh, beautiful off-speed pitch, pulls the string and gets a much-needed strikeout for the Cougars. Beautiful, beautiful pitch from Kate. Off-speed. Oh, falls off the table. Yeah. She got Davis on that one. Kate Daly looks like she's got a, a magic necklace, a little ruby. Giving her some power up there. She fires in there with the strike. Belt high. Hey, jewelry, bows, that's meaningful stuff, you know. Hey. If you're playing good, you leave that thing on. <laughs> thousand percent. I if not, you switch it. <laughs> still to this day, because of baseball, I only put my left sock, shoe, and pant leg on first. I'm, I'm all superstitious. Yep, it's a thing. And she misses outside, Dally does, so one ball, one strike. What were yours? Okay, I didn't really have any, but <laughs> I know a lot of girls did. Oh, great, great shots for our camera crew, getting that up-close jewelry look. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch, off speed, outside corner for strike two. Okay, actually, I accidentally played with my Apple Watch on all the time, but when I did, I would hit so good. <laughs> so until they told me to take it off, I usually left it on. Nice. So that was my thing. Okay. You shouldn't do that, but. Here's the one, two. Swing and a miss. Throw down to first. In time. Out number two. Getting them with the change up. Macy Simmons doing a great job behind the plate. Keeping it in front of her. And firing down to Hunter Ava. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Kate, da Kate Daly. Just what BYU needed. I mean, best case scenario, she's striking people out. Um, but has done a really good job of throwing lots of strikes um, and getting ahead in counts, which is huge when you're coming off the bench and um, are the offset pitcher for Temples when it wasn't quite going her way at the end. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Another off speed, and that one completely fooled Godwin. And you mentioned a different look, and this has been a, a completely different look than what Oklahoma State's seen all day, and all series, really. Yeah. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Fastball hit foul down the line. So one ball and two strikes. And that's why pitching changes can be so effective, too. I mean, Oklahoma State gets a couple hits, and that momentum really can carry you. Farther than sometimes it feels like it should, but changing it up a little really can just take it out of them. I mean, two Ks in a row is hard when you're Oklahoma State and trying to rally some runs together. Kate Daly strikes out the side. She comes in in relief and gets three straight strikeouts. Yeah, that's what really makes the difference in games is who hits in the situations where you have runners on base. And two grand slams today, like, Unreal. that just doesn't happen. First pitch from Acock, misses outside, one ball and no strikes. To Matty Udall. And make that one ball and one strike. It looked like a little off-speed pitch there from Kyra Acock. Oh, and Acock has got the glasses on now, too. Here's the 1-1. One -one. It's a good idea to go down low, just barely missing the knees. Two balls and one strike to Matty Udall. Matty Udall grounded to second in the first and got a single in the third. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Swing and a miss, two balls and two strikes. 
again, a little bit ahead of that pitch. It doesn't really seem to be a changeup, maybe a little bit of an off speed, you know, in between that fastball and changeup range. Just throwing you all off a little bit on both of her swing attempts so far this at bat. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Just barely misses that outside corner. Full count to Maddie Udall to lead things off here in the bottom of the fourth. Here's the payoff pitch. And this ball is laced into left field. So a leadoff single for Maddie Udall. And if you're Kyra Aycock, I mean, that's just got to be brutal. Getting the full count and then yeah. giving up a hit. Frustrating, especially to lead off an inning. You really just want to get that first batter out. But for BYU, I mean, that's what they've been doing all day, honestly. They've all been hitting the ball one through nine in their lineup. Aycock misses to Komoku. One ball and no strike to Kayla. Here's a 1-0. Hard ground ball to third, scooped up by Edwards. And they get the lead runner at second base. Can't quite complete the around the horn double play. And a tough ball for Carly Godwin to handle at first. Yeah, if she does handle it though, I mean, I believe that throw beat the runner and easily a double play. Here's another look at it. Edwards does well, fires over. Great exchange. And Acock gets in there with the strike. Tomorrow, the 0 1. And Acock misses low and in the dirt. One ball, one strike. Morrow had that grand slam that put BYU on top. And she swings and misses. No ball and two strikes. Yeah, Morrow's grand slam was four of the five runs in that third inning. Here's the 0-2 pitch. High and outside, missing for ball one. I mean, a lot of hitting is about confidence, right? So Morrow getting that grand slam definitely boosted her confidence. And the 2-2, Morrow goes down swinging. But doesn't mean you can't come and strike out, you know, your next at bat. That's just part of the game. But she just needs to keep that confidence with her that she had after that grand slam and carry that into her next at bats because, I mean, the strikeouts are going to happen and the grand slams are going to happen, but you have to live on that grand slam energy. Mm. And how hard is that? Really hard. I mean, in softball, you're hitting three, four hundred. You're really good. <laughs> that means you get out, you know, seven or six times out of ten attempts. Like, that's hard mentally to deal with um, when you're just trying so hard to be successful at the plate. The 1 0 pitch swung on and missed. One ball, one strike to Simmons. There's a good look at Coach Gajewski in the dugout for the Cowgirls. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Another off speed, getting Simmons out in front. One ball, two strikes. Acock getting a lot of BYU hitters with that pitch this inning. Lots of swings and misses for the Cougars. Here's the 1-2. Ooh, I don't know where that one missed. Yeah. Almost in the same spot that Simmons swung at the two times before that pitch. Yeah. Either way, Simmons will take that for ball two. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. And a check swing number down to third. And Talon Edwards is on my all-defensive team. She is fantastic down there. And BYU on top, 10-5. And Kate Daly, who came into relief. Chloe Temples, last inning. Struck out the side. Now she's down 1-0 to Caroline Wong. Here's the 1-0 pitch. 
Paints an outside corner, one ball, one strike. And Dally misses high, two balls and a strike. like to see the rest of the game from her, you know, if you could keep that strikeout, strikeout, strikeout throughout the rest of the game, that'd be awesome. But these hitters talk to each other. They watch. They're constantly learning. They know she has that changeup. And I expect to see a little bit more hints Ooh. off of. There's another line drive laser home run. Caroline Wong getting in on the action. A Wong gone home run for Oklahoma State. And at what point, if you're BYU and Coach Eakin, do you start to get a little bit nervous here? Yeah, probably right now. Right now, okay. Yep. <laughs> and like you said earlier, Taylor, th these these home runs, they're not like, you know, skyscrapers or anything. These are like hard hit line yeah. drive home runs. Absolutely. I mean, the game yesterday was a dogfight, and we're seeing that same thing today. I mean, going down 10-2, that can be really disheartening for Oklahoma State, but they are not letting themselves be out of it, just crawling their way back into this game. Only down by four after being down by eight. Nobody out. Top of the fifth inning. So after giving up a home run, coming right back and hitting. I think she hit the bat, Ooh. so it's going to get called a foul ball. So Kate Daly gets bailed out by the knob. And Claire Tim lives to see another pitch, so to speak. Here's the 0-1, low and in the dirt. I thought that hit Tim's elbow guard. But yeah, it must have just hit that knob. And the coach is going to come out and have a talk with Kate Daly. And I mean, coming into this inning, Kate was on a high from those three strikeouts, and then to have a home run, I mean, oh, you just groan about it, but there's nothing you can do about it but move forward and just keep doing what she's doing. She's been super successful so far in this game. That was another good look, thanks to our replay crew. Technical term, EVS. That's what they do. They do that best. Line drive to short. And making the play was Ilana Agbayani. That thing had some funky spin. And she stuck with it and got the out. Yeah, sometimes when the ball is spinning like that, it is hard to hold on to. And no one has a speedier recovery than Agbayani. I mean, she moves so quickly. So Michaela Wark at the dish. And first pitch she sees from Kate Daly is outside. One ball and no strikes to Wark, who flew out to center. And got a double earlier this afternoon. And Daly really trying to hit that outside corner, misses again. Two balls and no strikes. Here's the 2 0 pitch. Low and in the dirt for ball three. Coach Gajewski, do you give the green light here? Absolutely. Here's the 3-0. Low and outside, four straight pitches for a walk. And Oklahoma State still alive with one out in the top of the fifth. Yeah, in that 3-0 situation, I mean, the odds of her throwing a pitch right down the middle because you know she doesn't want to walk you are just so high. So. I mean, as a coach, if you trust your players to give them that, 
I mean, they know what they can hit and they can recognize that pitch. And it could end up, you know, paying big dividends, a home run ball, a really nice hit. But they'll take the walk too. So I think the Oklahoma State brought in Hayden Sokolowski as, uh, as the pinch runner at first. And there's a hard hit ball over Matty Udall in third, going all the way into left field. And that is a, I was gonna say stand up, but that's either way, it's a double for Oklahoma State and the speed of so Sokolowski getting all the way over to third. Maddie Udall playing in and just had that ball hit right over her head. Yeah, we've seen two balls just right down that third baseline. Maddie Bejarano got to it quick and made the heads up play of going after that runner at second base. She knew she didn't have a chance at third. And I mean, runner at third was just getting up from her slide as she's making the throw. So really the smart choice to go after that runner at second base. Runners in scoring position. Here's a little number to short. There's one out there as David gets tagged, trying to make her way over to third. But a run comes across. So with two away in the top of the fifth, BYU's lead only three. Yeah, eight to three. <laughs> you know, going from an eight-run lead to a three-run lead in just you know, a matter of not even two full innings. It's just been a game of scoring today. Taylor Anderson. The debutante in her very first collegiate start. Gets her very first collegiate home run. And she has an opportunity to keep this rally alive in the top of the fifth for these cowgirls. She shows bunt, she pulls it back. And she watches that one go high and outside for two balls and no strikes. And BYU's got a couple arms getting loose in the bullpen. And they're trying to see if Kay Daly can get herself out of this inning. And if you're Macy Simmons, what are you saying to her right there? Throw strikes. You know, she's really successful when she's throwing lots of strikes and not getting herself into these 2-0 counts, 3-1 counts. I mean, she has a defense behind her. She just really needs to make this team hit the ball and not give up freebies and not dig herself in a hole. And yeah. another difference in this inning is we really haven't seen that change up that she threw so much that inning before. Right there on cue. As I say it, there it is. <laughs> but that really was her go-to that inning when she came in to throw. And I don't know why they really went away from it. I don't know if it wasn't working as well at the beginning of this inning. But that definitely is a pitch that she needs. Here comes the 2-1 pitch. And a very aggressive play there from Taylor Anderson. A, a risky play at that. They're going to try and do it a hit and run. So some strategy on the cowgirl side. The two balls, two strikes, two outs, top of the fifth. BYU up by three. Here's the offering. And this one is foul. Teams, a hard challenge for BYU to come into. Acox delivery high for one ball. And no strikes to Jalen Lambert. I know you mentioned this with Dave last night on the, on the air. Uh, the Big 12 Conference, the best basketball conference, the best softball conference. I mean, they're competitive. Arguably the best football conference, too. You could talk about that. And there's a hard ground ball to second. And Davis to Godwin retires Lambert very quickly and easily. And you played, you played with BYU when they were part of the WCC, and you saw a lot of success there. Uh, but coming into this Big 12 Conference as a former player, how, how stoked were you about hearing that? I mean, so cool for BYU. West Coast Conference is 
is good, especially if you're winning the conference. But if you don't, it's so hard to get that bid into um, the end of year tournament, the NCAA, where where it's all what it's all about, right? So to get to be a part of such a better conference um, that's a lot more competitive and a lot more top 25 teams competing in it, so cool for BYU. I'm jealous. I wish that I was playing right now and got to face this kind of competition for like conference matchups, like so cool. Yeah, you mentioned that today coming into this. 0-2, and Agbayani watches that one go out of play. Excuse me, out of the zone, one ball and two strikes. I'm so used to saying out of play for how many home runs we've had today. Yeah. And Agbayani was one of them. Here's the one, two. Another miss outside. Agbayani has been on all three times today. A walk, a single, and a home run. And there is a dribbler to second. And her speed gets her there. Rosie Davis with the bobble and can't put her out. Now bring up Maddie Bejarano. But you've talked about the speed and how speed kills. You just can't teach speed. And Agbayani, already a lefty, just shot out of the box like a cannon. Yeah, and in softball, you bobble the ball. I mean, if that player is fast up to bat, it's really hard to recover and get the out at first. That's when clean defense becomes a huge part of games. Matty Bejarano, the double and an RBI registered tonight. Watches that pitch from Acock right down the middle. A one pitch. Grounded out of play down the first base side. No balls and two strikes. Again, BYU on top 10 to 7. If you're just now joining us, thank you. Greetings from Provo. Utah, excuse me, BYU had a big lead. As that ball misses outside. Bejarano now 2-2 two and two to the count. BYU got a grand slam in the first, got a run in the second, then they got five in the third, and they were on top eight to two at one point. And now Oklahoma State's come all the way back. Only down by three are the Cowgirls. Seven runs manufactured in really four innings. One run in the second, one in the third, three runs in the fourth, and two in the fifth. Not a lot of zeros on the board today. No. Here's the two, two. Bejarano puts it in play, grounder to short. And Megan Bloodworth throws over to Davis to get Agbayani out. So two away now here in the bottom of the fifth. And Lily Owens is at the dish. And Lily Owens. Like you said earlier, with that aggressive, powerful swing, jumps on the first pitch, fouls this one out of play. It really almost feels like there's a little bit of a lull in BYU's offense right now. I mean, we see a zero last inning, only one hit so far this inning. Just that pitching change that we talk about, right? I mean, they brought in and she got hit, but then bringing back in Acock, it really just has thrown BYU off almost a little bit, and they're struggling to manufacture runs again. Acock misses low, one ball and one strike. It has a hit or two when you're so hyped and energetic, and then you do find that low, it's hard to get right back up. But there, Lily Owens bloops one into left field for a base hit. A two-out rally, possibly here for the Cougars. Even something like that can do the trick. Yeah, you take those every day. Because you deserve them, because sometimes you hit the ball hard and it goes right to somebody. Very true, very <laughs> true. Owens just a little bit out in front of that, got that off the end of the bat, and blooped it into shallow left field. 
Ooh, that was a juicy changeup right over the middle of the plate. Hunter Ava, who had the grand slam in the first inning, looking to tack on a couple more for the Cougars. And Acock wisely goes down in the zone, trying to get Ava to chase. Here's the 1-1 pitch. That ball laced down the third baseline, out of, out of play. So ever since that grand slam, Ava trying to get back on the bases. She got hit by a pitch, and then grounded out to third. Here's the 1-2. Very low. Good. Good decision there by Acock and Wong, trying to see if they can get her to chase again. Yeah, and not a bad spot. I mean, that's a questionable pitch, which is exactly where you want it in a 2-1 count. Sorry, a 1-2 count. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Another hard ground ball foul down the third base side. Ava is a really tough hitter to pitch to. I mean, she took a ball on the outside earlier off Acock over the right center field fence. But then you throw to her inside and it's almost like she can hit the ball 10 times harder. Like it's really hard to know where to go with her. She hits the really high ball well. She hits low ball well. She's good at sitting on change-ups. And right on cue, she pokes one into right field. Here comes the throw home, not in time. And Ava does it again. And Bejarano coming all the way around to score from second using that speed. Gets an insurance run for the Cougars, 11 to seven in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, Acock chooses to go outside again on Ava and she just takes her hands to the ball so well. Lots of these hitters don't even finish their swing. Like it's just like a poke, but all the swing really is to hit a hard is the contact point, right? So as long as you have good contact, you can get a really nice hit off of something like that. And there's the first pitch to Maddie Udall, low and inside for ball one. And our great camera crew had a had a great close-up shot. Uh, Hunter Ava, she was even choked up on that last that last uh, hit she had. Yeah, with a you know two strike you know two two count. I mean, strategic of her two choke up. She's really just trying to make good contact with something, which we saw on that swing. And a really good payout for her BYU scoring another run. So Kyra Acock with the 1-1 count. Missing low to Maddie Udall. Two balls and one strike. And now the crowd suddenly getting a little rise. Yeah, Ava made it to second. So Ava, defensive indifference or a stolen base, whatever you want to call it. And this ball is lifted into shallow center field. But there to make the out is Scotland David. So BYU tacks on another run. We go to the 12 now on ESPN+. And Kate Daly in the pitcher circle. Winds and fires and misses low to Rosie Davis for one ball and no strikes to start things off. Here's the 1-0 from Daly. And paints the corner on the outside. And that was the first time I've heard Brandy Sanderson, the home plate umpire's voice in a while. Making sure he's still awake back there. <laughs> one ball and one strike. Low and in the dirt, two balls and one strike. So Taylor, if you look up at the scoreboard for Oklahoma State, Zero in the first, one, one, three, and two. And so they've slowly been chipping away at this BYU lead. How do you continue that momentum? I mean, honestly, just keeping with what they're doing, they really are doing a good job at swinging at strikes, making the pitchers throw to them. Just like that comebacker, nice, easy PFP 
for Kate Daly, the one three put out. Trying to put the ball in play, forcing BYU essentially to either make a play or not, right? Yeah, and making good adjustments to, you know, the pitching. We saw them go down three, sh three strikeouts in a row when Kate initially went in, and they really made some good adjustments and put up two runs on her last inning. And there goes Kate Daly trying to go back to her bread and butter with the off speed. And Talon Edwards, who's defensively been fantastic at third today. Ahead to count 1-0. Make that two balls and no strikes. Talon Edwards so far 0 for 5 in the series between last night and so far tonight. Looking for her first hit. Here's the 2-0. Low and in the dirt. Three straight balls. And we talked about that lull. That kind of looks like a lull right there in the dugout. Yeah, it does a little bit. And, and they're playing with a lead, but it it shouldn't really feel like that much of a lead. I know it's four runs, but I mean, we've seen all game that Oklahoma State is not going to go down easy. There's a, there's a strike right down the middle. So three balls and a strike from Kate Daly. Here's a 3-1. This one slapped to second. Fired over to first. Tristan Turlington to Hunter Ava. The 4-3 put out. I think correction, Haley Morrow is now at second base. Oh, I beg your pardon. Thank you for that. And honestly, a great play by her. Balls that bounce like that, that take that short hop right before they get to you can be hard to handle sometimes. The best thing you can do is run up on it and scoop it off the short hop. And that's just what Morrow did. And play, for a really good out. Play the ball, don't let the ball play you. Exactly. There's a line drive foul down the third base side. And the BYU pitching staff collectively has done a good job against Carly Godwin today. She flew out in the first, flew out in the third, and struck out in the fourth. And Godwin would love to get some revenge. Mm. With that pitch, you can see Kate Daly's not trying to flirt too much with the danger zone. One ball and one strike. Yeah, she needs to be smart, throw it on the corners, but also, like we've talked about all night, she's got to be throwing those strikes. It's so hard against hitters this good to work from behind and count. Here's the 1-1, one, one. low and in the dirt. Two balls and a strike. Coach Kajewski looking on. I'm not sure that was, that was, that was not a, we're not trying to sign steal, that was not a <laughs> sign, he was just scratching his head. Here's the 2-1 pitch, low and in the dirt again, three balls and a strike. And you can see Macy Simmons Motioning to her young catcher, Kate Daly, just to calm down. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of the struggles and growing pains that Kate's going to have to go through is she's just a freshman. I mean, this is a tall order for her to take on. And um, Mares that threw yesterday to take on these big 12 teams that have just these, you know, stacked lineup of hitters. That's why we see a lot of that really on and maybe not quite so on moments from them because they're just still getting used to throwing against teams like this. Full count. Here's the offering from Daly. Misses outside, ball four. So Godwin gets a walk and the two out rally for the Cowgirls is still alive. And with like the home run ball that we've seen today, I mean, 
We see another one, and it's now a two-run lead that BYU has. It's just been such a big part of the game today. You don't always see that in games. It's always a threat, but it's just been, like, consistent all night tonight. Mm -hmm. You can never really feel safe. So now Caroline Wong at the dish, who had that home run her last at bat. And Dally misses on the outside. And the Cowgirls really showing some good plate discipline right now, making the BOU pitchers come to them and not chasing. It's like Coach Eakin talking to the umpires. He motioned for the headset. Yeah, I initially thought he was going out to talk to Kate, but he wants a replay of something maybe. And so that is the call. So Godwin did leave early. And Kate is a normal winning record that we see. In the bottom of the sixth, BYU holding on to that 11-7 lead, trying to snap that five-game losing skid. And like you mentioned, all it takes is just one game. And a soft liner right to shortstop. And Megan Bloodworth does her job. And quickly, Acock gets an out. There's another look at it. A soft liner. And Bloodworth making a play. And Morrow now at the dish. And a nice off-speed pitch there from Acock. Gets Morrow out early. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That one misses low for ball one. I mean, this could potentially be BYU's last at bats if they go out and get three outs at the top of the seventh inning. It really would make them feel good to tack on another one or two runs and just have that insurance as they really try and go get this win on their home field tonight. So with that foul ball, one ball and two strikes tomorrow. And Morrow stays alive. Right now we saw, based off of that graphic, Big 12 play, BYU one and five. And looking for Big 12 win number two in this inaugural season for the Cougars in the Big 12 conference. And this ball over to third, but went out just before it hit the bag. So Morrow will go back and get another look. Going all the way back to March 9th was when uh, BYU got that first victory in Big 12 play, that 10-8 victory over Texas Tech. Ooh, that was a little low from what we've seen all day, but yeah. either way, Acock gets the strikeout of Morrow. And her second strikeout for tonight. Really haven't seen tons of strikeouts this game from both sides. It's, it's been a hitting game tonight. Yeah. And that one misses from Acock. So Macy Simmons, the catcher at the dish, one for three. With two outs in the bottom of the sixth. Well, that was the same spot that... Uh... <laughs> yeah, crowd not happy about that one. And I mean, just when we haven't seen it all game, you know, and then seeing it now in the bottom of the sixth inning. And because those, those calls are now getting called now you're seeing uh, the batters you know having to go chase those pitches now so Macy yeah. Simmons going low to foul that one off but as long as it goes both ways I mean you know hopefully Kate's watching that and uses it to her advantage as she goes out to try and secure secure those last three outs 
Well, BYU goes down very quickly and they, from getting Big 12 win number two in their inaugural conference, in their inaugural season, excuse me, in the Big 12 conference. And you've talked about with some young pitching, it's a lot of growing pains for this BYU team, but they got the bats alive here tonight, 11 runs, and uh, essentially you got a close-up shot. Yep. And, you know, closing up shop is a lot. Like we talked about all night, just coming out and throwing strikes, pitching like you have a lead and getting ahead in the counts. That's really going to be the difference. And that's where it can be really hard for these freshman pitchers, you know. They're nervous. They know they're so close to that win, and sometimes it makes them a little, you know, jittery, and they don't throw like they've been throwing all game. So it'll be interesting to see how Kate handles this, this situation right now. Kate Daly, the freshman, three outs away. And standing in her way right now, Caroline Wong and a couple BYU pitchers in the bullpen. Maris, one of them we saw her last night. There's a ground ball up the middle for a base hit. And Wong is aboard. Yeah, gave herself a great chance hitting that ball up the middle. It's hard to defend plays like that. Morrow almost got to that, though. She was speedy getting over there. Oklahoma State will take it. So Morrow will head to the dugout. And coming on to run for Morrow is Tia Warsup. For Wing, right? Correct, for yes, Wong. For, yeah, Wong. And this is grounded foul and out of play. You can sense the tension yeah. in, in the ballpark. Like it feels like it's a <laughs> two to one ball game, really not does. 11 to seven right now. No. Because BYU knows, they know how hard it is or has been for them since, you know, Big 12 play to secure a win. And this is huge. And this ball gets past Macy Simmons. And making her way down to second is Warsup. Kate's still struggling a little bit to find that control of her changeup that was just so on for her when she came in a few innings ago. She keeps coming to it, and it's always it's it's been a little bit low. So hopefully she can make that adjustment this inning and use that pitch to her advantage a little bit more. There's the 1-1 one -one pitch. There's that change up, and she gets Tim chasing. One ball and two strikes. Here's the one, two. And this one lifted to second base, making the catch, Haley Morrow. So one away in the top of the seventh. And BYU now just two outs away from that win. Michaela Wark at the plate. And Dally misses high for ball one. Dally's 1-0 pitch in there for strike one. Work got a double in the second. She flew out to center in the third and then got a walk in the fifth. Here's the 1-1 pitch. And that one tailed inside for ball two. With one away and worse up on second. Work trying to extend this rally. 
for the Cowgirls. Here's the 2-1. In there, knee high for strike two. Now Kate Daly looks down to her catcher. Macy Simmons gets the sign. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Low in the dirt. This one gets past Simmons. And Warsup will go all the way to third. I mean, tough break for BYU. You don't see it very often when a catcher goes down to block and it somehow gets between their legs. Just looked like it hit a, a dead patch of dirt yeah. and just slid right underneath Macy Simmons. Here's the payoff pitch. Outside for ball four. So runners at the corners with one out. And Scotland David at the plate. There's your rally cap, your rally visor, if you will for Oklahoma State. And Simmons coming out to direct traffic in these first and third situations. This is where a little trickeration on the base pass start to come in. Yeah, and if you're BYU, if they do, you know, run a first and third situation, I mean, I would go for the out. You know, if they're going to give you an out at second base, I'd let the run score and get an out because then you just need one more to finish off this game. And Dally fires in there for strike one. And that's a veteran perspective by a veteran player right there, because a lot of people would think, oh, there's a runner at third, gotta get that, gotta get that out before they cross. But when you have the, that four-run lead, you do want to get that, that sure thing if you can. That sounded like it might have been tipped, but home yeah. plate umpire Brady Sanderson didn't signal. It must have tipped off her glove, because I thought the same thing. I definitely heard something, but must have just been the. But Scotland David at the plate with a 1-1 count. And this ball lifted into foul territory. Coming over to make the catch was Ilana Agbayani showing off her speed, two away. And that should ease the tensions for Kate Daly a little bit. Yeah. And Agbani was loud. I could hear her up here calling for that ball. And it really is her ball if she can get to it. Um, and Maddie Udall doing a really good job tapering off and just letting Agbani have all the space to catch that ball. And I think we're going to have a pinch hitter for the Cowgirls. Looks like Lexi McDonald, the sophomore, is going to come up to the dish with a runner at second. Two outs. An opportunity to possibly make this a one-run game. And Kate Daly, the freshman, trying to secure this one for the Cougars. And Daly slips in the circle. Geez, hopefully she's okay. That scared me. <laughs> that looked really awkward. I don't know if her foot slipped or like if her knee gave out, you know, like that's totally different thing. She seems okay. They're gonna check on her. Looks like she's going and trying to dig in the dirt a little bit harder, but she was smiling. Yeah, seems to be okay. Laughing it off. <laughs> So that adrenaline kicking in as well. BYU, BYU, BYU. So giving her another practice pitch, making sure it's still good. She gave the signal. And maybe the, uh, the little levity there might help her out. She's getting to laugh about something. Yeah. Here's the 1-0 pitch. And that one finds the center of the plate for strike one. And something like that really can make a big difference. Like mentally, this is a taxing 
place to be in this game, but for her to just be able to smile and laugh and think about something else for one second really can help in the mental approach to a game like this and in this situation. 1-1 one, one pitch, sails high. Macy Simmons does well to keep it in the glove. Yeah, good grab. Two balls and a strike. And the next pitch for Kate Daly will be her 60th. Here's the 2-1. Good ground ball foul. Two balls, two strikes. And Oklahoma State down to their final strike of the night. And it's you want to feel confident for BYU right now, but I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> I'm nervous. They're a couple pitches away potentially, but it could also go the other way and we see this game getting tied up or potentially Oklahoma State taking the lead. Here's the 2-2 pitch. In the dirt for ball three. And tensions will rise a little bit higher. Lots of BYU fans standing, clapping, really trying to cheer this BYU team on for a finish right now. Here's the payoff pitch from Daly. Ground ball to second. Morrow fires it over. Game over. BYU wins and gets their second victory in